Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're talking about a fixed blade. As you can see, we're out in the forest. This is where I like to go for fixed blade reviews. And if we scroll down here, let's see, it'll come up just a little so the leg's not in the frame. Uh, we have here the Falkneven F1X. Come on, focus you. Uh, this is a really, really cool knife. It's got some different and interesting things going on. So I want to spend a little bit of time with you on this knife because there's not a lot out there. And this is significantly different. Like you can't just go watch, say, a Falcon even F1 or even F1 Pro video and think, oh, I've got this figured out. This is quite a bit different from either one of those in construction, in blade grind, in blade steel. Okay, so there's lots of differences. And this is a pretty interesting and unique knife. And so so I want to really give you guys a good handle on what's happening here. Um, so I guess we should start off with start off with size and weight. And let me just say this is not um, this is not an EDC fixed blade. This is not a paring knife. This is not for kitchen work. This is a purpose built bushcraft survival type of knife, right? This is the kind of knife that's meant to take a beating and to perform through just about any circumstance you could think of uh, and just be uncompromisingly tough and durable. And I think that really is. So if you're looking for something to, to peel apples with and chop carrots, this probably isn't the knife for you. However, if you want something that is just insanely tough and overbuilt to take with you out in the forest and really beat on, this may be the perfect knife for you. Now, there are a lot of other options out there. We're going to get into some comparisons here. That's going to be a, a significant portion of this video. But... Uh, there's a lot to recommend this knife and and there's a lot to convince someone to pay the price that it costs. It's not a cheap knife either. So let's go ahead and get into the specs first of all. Size and weight on this guy, eight and five eighths inches overall. And there's a mosquito flying nicely through the, the frame. Uh, hopefully I don't end up getting bit by it. So eight and five eighths overall, four inches on the blade, four and five eighths on the handle, 7.7 .7 ounces. So pretty hefty knife. And when you add the sheath here, there we go. That's going to go up to about nine ounces. So you're carrying about nine ounces. We'll get to the sheath in a few minutes. But for now, let's just stick to the knife itself, beginning with this blade. So we've got a very, very heavy duty blade, 5 sixteenths of an inch thick, convex grind, cobalt laminated steel. So what we've got here is a harder cobalt steel that makes up the cutting edge and then a softer stainless steel making up the rest of the blade. Again, designed to be tough and durable. And by the way, it looks kind of cool too, but very, very purpose-built, heavy-duty type of blade. Now, the one thing that we normally say at this point is how can a knife like this, like look how thick it is, uh, cut well. And yet I have to say this cuts exceptionally well like it it almost doesn't seem right uh, and that's because of that convex grind and i guess a convex grind combined with a zero grind i don't know someone someone can uh, comment down below are there any knives out there i can't think of any off the top of my head that have a convex grind and a secondary bevel i think you know the whole purpose of a convex grind is to not need a secondary bevel but to still end up with a very tough very durable blade that can actually cut. And so what's really, really cool about this, let me talk about this just a little bit. A convex grind, and we'll compare this to some other grinds later, but for now, a convex grind is this shape. And that's important. Other common grinds, okay, you get a flat grind, you get a hollow grind, or you get a convex grind. Uh, by the way, I guess we should talk about, there's also a Scandi grind like a Mora. Uh, that would be you know, I guess this, <laughs> where you've got two straight edges and then uh, a rather abrupt zero grind at the end. The common, the common thing between this and the Mora is neither one of them, well, the Mora does have a little secondary bevel, but neither one of them have a, a secondary bevel or a true Scandi grind doesn't have a secondary bevel. And in this case, the, a convex grind doesn't either. And what that allows for is a very gentle transition. So as this starts cutting into material, let me grab a stick or something so I can kind of demonstrate. So as this starts cutting in, there's there's no transition point. There's no sort of corner that it has to turn because there's no secondary bevel. And it means this insanely thick, overbuilt, crazy heavy duty blade can still give me these super, super slim 
little curly cues here. And I can actually go incredibly thin if I wanted to. If I was working on, you know, getting a, a fire going with uh, some magnesium and a, and a fire steel, uh, I would get some really, really thin curly cues. And this blade can do a great job of that. Any kind of carving task, this is going to really, really be good at. What's cool about this, though, is you get this very fine edge, and yet it's also a very confidence-inspiring edge. So I can, without hesitation, I don't have all that much material lying around here, so I'm going to try this, but I can baton with this without really worrying about it at all. I'm actually pounding this into that log, so let's try this log. There we go. Uh, and, and I don't even have to worry about it because it's the convex grind makes it at the same time very tough and makes it get into material, bite into material very, very well. So for a lot of tasks, this is going to be really, really good. It does have its limitations, and those are important to know. As I said, this is not doesn't belong in the kitchen. It's not really so much of an EDC knife. But for wood processing tasks, even for, you know, you could, do, you could skin an animal with this. Uh, meat, you know, gets out of the way pretty easily. And I will say the cobalt steel does hold an edge very, very well. I'm not going to get into a huge long cut test, but... Uh, uh, Cedric Nade at Gear and Outdoors. Cedric, uh, Pete did do a full comparison between this, these blades, the cobalt steel blades, and the standard VG10. And the cobalt, cobalt steel outperformed the VG10 considerably. So this is going to be more like an S35VN or something like that, uh, a little nicer blade steel. Uh, it is stainless steel, by the way, which again is important. A, a lot of bushcraft knives are going to be carbon steel. I actually prefer stainless steel for the forest, and I like the harder steels rather than sort of 1095 or something, because I like the idea that I can take this out for a couple days and I don't need to sharpen it. All right, so uh, that's the blade convex grind. They've done a nice job here with the sharpening choil and the ricasso. Uh, pretty now, the other thing I think is kind of neat about this is it's a very traditional looking knife. So, you know, this is, you know, if you looked up knife in the dictionary, this is sort of what you imagine. And I think Faulkner even tries to kind of stick to that uh, to make it as classic and clean as possible. And I do appreciate that. So let's move on over to the handle here. So they've got this thermal run handle that is very, very grippy. It's sort of a rubberized coating. It's not like many things that I've felt before. It's imagine a cold steel recon one something you know any of the older cold steels where they had that really really grippy g10 it's like that only a little bit softer so in it it takes that that grippiness that comes from this texture and adds a bit of cushion to it so that it, it almost sticks to your fingers it's it's really really aggressive and you know again it's purpose built this is the idea here is that i can hold on to this for a long time i never have to worry about dropping it losing it it's just really really grippy uh, if you put a glove on it it really even expands that further it gets really really good so uh, I, I like this grip quite a lot. It's not fancy. It's not, you know, one of these bark rivers that look beautiful. Um, and, you know, there would be a lot of bark rivers, by the way, that would compete with this. The, the Bravo one is a knife I really need to get my hands on. And I'd love to do a head-to-head -head comparison between this and a Bravo one. That would be a very interesting video, I think. Uh, price point is similar. Both have a Scandi grind. Um, I mean, both have uh, the convex grind. So, anyway... Let's move on. We've got a full tang here, and that's going to be different. The the F1, I think, has an overmolded frame. It's full tang in that the tang does come out here, but you, it's not a fully exposed tang. And I can't remember what the Pro does. It does something different as well. I don't think the tang is fully exposed all the way through on the Pro either. So uh, a little more of a purist build here. Um, very heavy duty, as you can see right there. Again, just designed to take an absolute beating and it does so well being quite comfortable and quite tough and you're not dropping this this is a very very grippy heavily textured uh, these are heavily textured scales all right so uh, the handle is comfortable it's grippy it's not the most comfortable knife I've ever had that would maybe be one of the only limitations as a bushcraft knife we generally talk about comfort we want something big and bulky this is not what I'd call bulky it does have a little bit of a palm swell but let me, if I got my, so I'm going to throw in, I'm not to the comparison portion yet, but here's the Lion Steel M4. Notice the difference. The Lion Steel is very hand filling, very bulky, and it's that way on purpose. The Falkneven is not nearly as thick. Okay. 
So, uh, back to our discussion of the knife, this knife in particular, let's take a look at this Zytel sheath. Now, Folknaven does these very, whoops, very plain Zytel sheaths, but they are, by all accounts, quite functional, and this one is very functional. It does have this locking mechanism on it. Now, I can't tell you how this is going to work over time, but in, you know, the, the few months that I've had this knife and used it, I've been very impressed, and I, it does inspire a lot of confidence. You know, if you're putting this, you know, you could carry this upside down, you could carry it uh, in any situation where you're at all concerned about losing your knife, this lock is a great option. Um, then, of course, you're going to unlock it, and unlocked, it comes out quite easily. I will say unlocked as well. There's a little bit of... I'll see if I can... There we go. If I hold it up to the mic, you can hear. There's a bit of shake, but once you lock it, it's, it's really locked in there. It's rock solid. So, uh, all important points to kind of consider. Finally, we can get to how this sheath is actually going to attach to your belt. So you've got this loop over here, just a very plain nylon loop. You could, of course, loop a belt through here. However, notice there's only about an inch and a half here. So if you're wearing a two inch belt, you're going to have issues with that. And then there is this securement point. You could also do like molly webbing or various options like that uh, and strap this in. The only downside that I see here is if you wanted to do some other kind of setup, the only thing I could see that you'd be able to do is to take these rivets out and replace it with screws and screw on some kind of alternate uh, attachment method. So that's, you know, you'd end up destroying the original to, to do whatever change you wanted to make. And I'm not in love with that. Otherwise, though, I really, really like this sheath and I like the locking option that just is really, really confidence inspiring. Maybe not everyone's going to like that. The one thing I will say is there have been times where this is on my belt. I reach down and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't get the knife. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm carrying the Falcon even today. I've got to unlock it. But if this was your exclusive carry, you'd very quickly, I think, get used to that. Uh, that feature and you'd know, oh, I've got to unlock this. And by the way, on those times where it happens, it's only a second where I go, oh yeah, I got to unlock this. And then I do it and, and extract it. So do I like the sheath? Yeah, I do like the sheath. Um, it's not great for EDC, but this is not so much an EDC knife anyway. Carrying this around in the bush, I think this works really, really well. All right, so that's the sheath. Now we've got to get to some comparisons and this is going to be a bit of an interesting discussion. All right, and guys, I, I really don't know what to do here because this is an expensive knife, all right, and it's a very purpose-built knife. So it's not fair really to compare this to knives that are not designed for the same purpose. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. By the way, I'm going to do a full comparison between these two knives because they have a very similar purpose. I'm probably going to do a full comparison as well between this and the B41 and perhaps even, let me know in the comments which of these you'd like to see the most, uh, the Bushcraft Black. So let's do a little bit of discussion here. So first of all, this is going to be the heavy dutiest of all of these, okay? Um, the convex grind and the extremely thick blade steel uh, is going to make this very, very heavy duty compared to these others. These are going to take a more balanced approach. So whether you go with the B41, you can see it's not super thick blade stock. Um, the M4 is a little bit thicker, you can see there. All right, ground higher, so kind of a better balanced blade. All right, and then of course, we've got the uh, the Bushcraft Black, which is a different approach, carbon steel, Scandi grind, um, and not gonna be as heavy duty as any of these. It's not, as, it's not a full tang, okay? Now, the problem here becomes, all right, um, I'm trying to get all these to fit in one spot and it just ain't working for me, guys. There we go. Okay, so these two have a dis similar approach to their grind. Both are going to be essentially zero grind. I know the Mora is not quite a zero grind. Uh, I may make that modification. Um, so both of these are going to bite into material really, really well. And here's the challenge I have when it comes to comparisons here. I feel like, you know, this knife is so purpose built that on a hike, I probably don't want it. Like on a typical hike with my family, I'm probably not doing a lot of bushcrafting or survival type stuff. 
if I need this for survival type stuff, that's great. But then I also need something like this that's a little more versatile. So with this, I can, you know, I can peel an apple or I can cut up vegetables for a soup or I can, you know, do some carving and, and bushcrafting type stuff as well. Is it as good at the bushcraft as these two? No, but it, it provides a lot more versatility. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say for comparison. I've got a few different knives here. Hopefully that's helpful to you, but I will make this suggestion. If you feel like you need the versatility that something like this offers or, or some other knives, there's long, the long, long list we could get into, um, that becomes a bit of a challenge. Then carrying something like this plus another knife limits you, and I may be inclined in that situation to carry just a Mora, right? The Mora is so cheap and so light that I can add this in my backpack or whatever if I need to do bushcrafting stuff. And then I can have my my B41 or my, my M4 or my B35 for the more general utility cutting tasks or even have a folding knife. So I could have a thin folding knife and this, but you can see how tools start to multiply here. And because this is so purpose built, it, it becomes, it's hard to figure out how I would carry this. All right. So certainly that is a bit of a limitation. Again, if you need a dedicated hard use bushcraft knife, there are very few things better than this. But again, my inclination is to carry something a little more versatile and then combine it with a hatchet or a folding saw or something like that. So what is my overall, hold on, I just want to grab the sheath here. What is my overall conclusion on this knife? I like it a lot. Okay, this appeals to me, to the, the nerd in me who wants the most crazy, heavy duty, overbuilt thing imaginable. And this really does deliver that. It's fantastic for anything wood related. It carves like a dream, you know, making feather sticks, if you're making tent pegs, splitting wood, you know, batoning. It does all that woodworking stuff really, really well. My only my only warning about this uh, is one, it's pretty expensive, and two, it becomes a question of you know if you want a little more versatility, then what option do you take? And that can become a bit of a challenge. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know by the way which comparisons you want to see. I do have a bunch that I want to get to. We'll talk to you soon.